on the knolls to the southwest of Jubilee Dam across Xingmeng Gorge were a number of machine gun pillboxes built during the late 1930s. They were interconnected by a system of tunnels and trenches to form a stronghold known as the Xingmeng Redoubt. It has an area of approximately 4.8 hectares. The shape of the redoubt is of an inverted isosceles trapezium with an isosceles triangle added to it. The redoubt was a cardinal component of the Gin Drinkers Line. The command post of this redoubt during the Battle of Hong Kong was located inside an artillery observation post below the western ridge line of the feature known as Smuggler's Ridge. The five machine gun pillboxes, now in ruins, had faces up to one meter thick. They were built of reinforced concrete in the form of Chinese farmhouses as camouflage. In sequence with the serializing system of the gin drinkers line, these pillboxes were numbered PB400, PB401A, PB401B, PB402 and PB403. All major tunnels and positions were named after streets and buildings in London. This is pillbox number 402 in the Ringer's line. Altogether in this area we have five pillboxes and this is one of those. Um, as you can see here, um, the wall of the pillbox has been collapsed and also the roof has been removed. Actually, the pillbox is used for machine guns. There were two machine guns uh, to be uh, placed here. There are two lock holes for the machine guns. Previously, this area were all clear without vegetation or um, soil. But due to many years of wearing out, so you can see the area just like that. The redoubt was strategically located at the neck of the narrow land barrier between Sha Tin Cove and Gin Drinkers Bay in Kwai Chong. Both bays were reclaimed after the war. The capture of this location meant that the new territories were cut in two, allowing the attackers to turn the left flank of the defenders. There has been a growing interest in the historical and heritage aspects of the redoubt, which is frequented by visitors. Local movie directors sometimes film scenes here. Sadly, there has yet to be a serious study on the history, structure or architecture of the redoubt. Some maps have been produced by enthusiasts, but they are not accurate. As a contribution to World War II military heritage studies in Hong Kong, professors Lawrence Lai and Daniel Ho of the Department of Real Estate and Construction in the Faculty of Architecture of the University of Hong Kong have, since 2007, been conducting the first post-war surveying exercise and documentary research on the redoubt. Their objectives are to produce a set of accurate survey plans and to scale 3D models for the future proper government conservation of the site and to find out the critical factors that led to the fall of the redoubt in less than three hours. The key survey findings have been released to the Agricultural, Fisheries and Conservation Department for the construction of a virtual model for public display in their Xingmen Tourist Center. As a Hong Kong person, I'm interested in the history of Hong Kong. I have read a lot of books on the Battle of Hong Kong uh, by many uh, experts, and I, I found that uh, one of the problems or the uh, missing points in these books uh, is the absence of accurate survey maps. There have been no accurate measured maps of battlefields or relics. And we began our project back in the year 2000. If the site is restored, it will arouse the interest of people of Hong Kong, youngsters, secondary students in particular, awareness on the history of Hong Kong, as well as um, the, the impact of history on the economic development. The reason why I didn't apply GPS surveying, most of these military features are located underground. So GPS instruments call for an open sky environment. We could not do the survey simply based on GPS measurement. So that's why we have to conduct a detailed underground survey.
when the redoubt was in the midst of collapsing at around zero hours on the morning of the 10th of December 1941. The British command hurriedly took steps to evacuate the gin drinkers line and ferry the troops from the new territories and Kowloon across the harbour to Hong Kong Island. In effect, like so much of the British preparations for World War II, everybody was looking in the wrong direction. And the Japanese were extremely good at choosing lines of attack that people didn't expect. So the two reasons why the Xingwen Redoubt fell very quickly, too few people and an attack by the Japanese from a direction for which this wasn't really prepared to defend. One of the leaders of the two Japanese crack units that stormed the redoubt was Lieutenant Wayabayashi Tohichi, who was credited for capturing this major bastion of the gin drinkers line. His name was inscribed on the wall of a tunnel near one of its entrances. In fact, the Japanese high command was annoyed by this attack on the redoubt as it had intended to bypass it. Due to protection by his regimental and battalion superiors, Wayabayashi Tohichi himself narrowly escaped a court-martial and was commended for exploiting the opportunity to take the redoubt. He was later killed in action by American mortar fire in Guadalcanal. As for the defenders, the mainland evacuation was in accordance with their premeditated defensive strategy to deny Victoria Harbour to the enemy. But this was an impossible task of employing only two brigades without any air or naval cover or possibility of reinforcement to delay the Japanese advance. However, two events testify to the dissatisfaction of the British with the unexpectedly quick loss of the redoubt. Event 1. After the battle, when they were confined to the Argyle Street POW camp, the British officers conducted a court of inquiry in an attempt to find out who and what was to blame for the redoubt's quick flaw. The inquiry took 10 days in May and June 1942 to complete, and the manuscript was lost, although mysteriously, a typescript of the court proceedings emerged in 1957. Event 2. In 1958, after the war, a British cabinet inquiry was held and a report was issued on the fall of the redoubt. This report was informed by the typed court proceedings of 1942, found in 1957. Why were the British authorities so concerned about the loss of this part of the gin drinker's line? One factor was surely that the garrison was the 8th platoon of A Company of the 2nd Battalion Royal Scots, the oldest infantry regiment in the British and famous for their bravery in major battles in Europe, notably those on the Western Front in the First World War. The plan of the defenders was to hold the line for seven days. Despite this, the vital hinge of its defense was lost in three hours. Furthermore, half of the defenders who were stationed in the command post bunker were captured alive, and the rest, other than those who resisted from within PB-401B until its surrender, withdrew along an unknown route to the position of the Rajputs on Smuggler's Ridge. There's almost no sign of that at all, except this major shell impact. So that tells us something about the battle. This was not a hard fought battle. It didn't bring in the full force of modern warfare. The cabinet report was less than crystal clear about the events or geography of the fight in the redoubt. First, a major interviewee admitted that he had never visited the redoubt. Second, the report did not have the benefit of an accurate layout of the redoubt. In fact, not even the Conqueror's sketch was accurate. The report affirmed that the trench system that linked the pillboxes was interconnected with that of the command post. The reality was that they were separated and unconnected by tunnels or trenches. 
the report accepted the story that those in the command post were locked up after a private took the key with him when going out. This submission is problematic, as there were other exits in this post. A major conclusion of the report was that the Royal Scots were weakened by the malaria that infested Chun Wan, their deployed zone. This proposition failed to explain why the Royal Scots did so well in all subsequent battles, notably on Golden Hill in Wong Nai Chong Gan, and on Mount Nicholson, in which they suffered high casualties among officers and the rank and file. The cabinet report referred to the testimony of Colonel Doi Tisishi. This said that the attack forces crossed Xingmen Gorge below the dam. It then climbed up near PB400 to invest the command bunker before taking the pillboxes from the rear. Not all of these pillboxes were in fact manned. However, post-war publications by Japanese veterans revealed that their assault troops moved along the road on top of the dam without being intercepted and ascended the redoubt in the vicinity of PB-401A and PB-401B. The unsolved mystery of 70 years is now solved. The surveying digital mapping and study of documentation in English and Japanese sources affirm the following. Firstly, the readout has two separate and unconnected tunnel systems. The pillboxes were not linked by tunnels with the command bunker, referred to in the 1942 court proceedings as the upper grill or trap, or its connected parts below a flight of steps called the lower grill. Secondly, the command post did not have a line of sight to the Jubilee Dam, PB402 or PB403. Thirdly, the firing arcs of all PBs and trenches covered the entire Jubilee Dam and its vicinity. Fourthly, the whole redoubt was guarded only by a platoon, about 37 men although it should have been manned by one full company, about 120 men. Those outside the OP were manning PB-401B, which was connected with PB-401A by a brick tunnel and positions near PB-402. Fifthly, the Japanese forces, with an overwhelming strength of one regiment, the 228th Regiment, quietly reached Needle Hill before dusk and could observe where the washed laundry of the defenders hung. The Japanese stormtroops have two waves, each numbering about 20 soldiers. The first wave attacked Pillbox 401B here, but when they were assaulted by the garrison at Pillbox 402, the second wave was sent ahead southwards to attack the observation post. The attackers did not have any numerical superiority. And seventhly, other than the walls of the command bunker and a few places along the tunnel Oxford Street, we could not find any evidence of explosions or shooting within the tunnels. The destruction of the pillboxes was for post-war anti-insurrectionist purposes, and the damage to a tunnel was the result of friendly artillery fire. Japanese commander Lieutenant Kineo Kitajima wrote in his 1946 memoir that the attackers did not use rifles like machine guns or mortars but simply hand grenades and sharp edge weapons in the contest. The conclusion of the Hong Kong University study was that although the readout contained certain blind spots it was, by and large, well-designed and would have done its job, provided that there were good patrols and forward posts. The right loophole of PB402 enjoyed a good view of the top of Jubilee Dam. The problem was not only an insufficient number of hands, but also a lack of forward positions for the defenders. 
Thus, the Japanese troops achieve complete surprise by attacking in darkness. It was highly likely that the defenders of PB-402 and its vicinity overestimated the scale of the attack and thus resolved to withdraw through the tunnel system to fight another day once they lost contact with the command post. Cowardice was not the reason for their withdrawal. It's not just like looking at maps and going, oh, draw an arrow, so-and-so attacked here and so-and-so attacked here and after an hour's fighting this collapsed. You suddenly see a vivid picture of the attacking forces having to climb a very steep hill. They're exhausted when they get there. The defending forces are looking out, they don't know what's happening. All they can hear is a lot of noise. It helps you paint a vivid portrait of a battle. It helps you tell the story. So if this gets conserved, you can bring school children here and they get a feel for history that you can get no other way. History is not just the dead past, it's part of the living present. In conclusion, we feel the time is now right for converting this site for heritage tourism purposes. I hope that the government can use our maps to further protect the environment, in particular for this conservation site. It will be a very interesting tourist spot, especially for those who like to know more about the history of Hong Kong, in particular around the Second World War. People need to know about it. This is their past. It's the past that helped Hong Kong be the place that it is. One of the aims of this project inside Reconstructing History is to provide advice or, or to our opinion, the government, uh, as to how this site can be uh, conserved for the future generations of Hong Kong.